Rachel, you set the straws. Hello, fellow couch potatoes. Welcome to my channel. Let's get to today's video. Episode 14 starts off with Dom and Jack comparing themselves to the worst couples in the experiment. Especially when there are other couples like, you know, Tamara and Brent and I guess Al and Sam that aren't doing as well as they should be. Al and Sam at six, they have consummated their marriage. And it's going to spring in a step. <laughs> And Sam says it was a natural and organic progression. What does that mean? And we had sex. <laughs> Good old experts, they know what they're talking about. I think it was a really natural and organic progression for us. We always come out stronger. Yeah, we do always come out stronger. Brent and Tamara agree to try and make things work and they begin this new chapter by hugging it out. The first new couple the married at first sight experts are matching is 30-year-old Kate and 39-year-old Matt. Kate has never been in love or had a boyfriend and I'm sorry, I think we've had the storyline with Al and I can't take it with her because she's 38. And there is no way that she has never had a boyfriend in what? 18 years of being a proper adult? Excuse me, no. And Matt has been in a seven-year marriage. Kate lives with her twin sister and feels she's failed at life because her friends are married with kids, even though she's a successful clinical nutritionist. Most people have marriage and kids by my age. Is this Holly 2.0? Matt wants to be a dad. He's been through IVF with his ex and has been a foster parent for four years. I think Matt should have been matched up with Holly instead as Matt really wants to start a family. Workaholics Carolina and Dion are matched next. Carolina is from Brazil. Her dad died before she was born and she has a 16 year old son. My son is my best friend. He's my everything. Currently building a skyscraper with his dad. As a young boy, Dad used to always say to me, one day, Dion, we're going to build a skyscraper together. The existing couples get their wedding invites and start getting ready for the big day. But Sam is not allowing Al to do his top button up. There has to be something. There just has to be something. You're doing out the top button? Yeah. No, you're not. Yeah, I am. You're lying. Yeah. You're lying. I'm serious. You're not wearing that. Why? I hate that shirt. Caroline is stressing about her eyelashes and hates her makeup. So she asks if she can do the makeup herself. I wish I could wash my whole face. No, me. don't wash it off now. Even though people are already arriving at the wedding. Hey guys. Are you like extras or? Extras? No. <laughs> <laughs> we're extras. <laughs> No, no, we're married. And Carolina is now over an hour late to her own wedding. I don't think we have time to wash your face. I, I, he can wait. Over at Kate's wedding, she says she's been called ugly in the past and she remedied that by getting Botox and fillers. However, she still doesn't feel good enough. Those feelings of doubt are always there with me. Kate really hopes her husband tells her she looks beautiful. I just hope that he does think I look beautiful when he sees me for the first time. Because I can't be rejected again. And Matt turns around and bites his lip, which is a good sign. He tells her she looks beautiful, which is what she wanted. You look beautiful. Here you do, you look beautiful. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Since yeah. her beauty has been validated, Kate says... He is nice, but physically, he is not what she would usually go for. Can I kiss? <laughs> they pick, and she's not feeling it. But I didn't feel it. Back at Carolina's wedding, which she has still not turned up to, everyone's now been waiting three hours. And Carolina does not feel guilty about her lack of punctuality. No feel any guilt about holding up the wedding you were running quite late 
I don't feel guilty. <laughs> uh, I don't. Dion says Carolina was worth the wait. He says she has beautiful eyes and teeth. Carolina also think Dion has lovely eyes and teeth. Over at Kate's wedding, she looks uncomfortable while taking those wedding intimate photos. The photographer asks Kate to sit on Matt's lap and Matt says he is very passionate, touchy and loves a good kiss, good massage and good sex. Good massage and a good sex. Kate tells the cameras he needs to slow down. I think he just needs to just, just put, a, put the brakes Carolina up. knows now that Dion is patient after she made him wait for her at the altar for three hours. She says she is a bit of a diva. No kidding. Can be a bit of a diva sometimes. <laughs> Kate says Matt is ticking all the boxes except for the one where she needs to like him back. She's questioning why she doesn't like him. I think I'm annoying myself because I'm going, this guy seems really, really nice. Why am I getting excited by him? Dominica is now preparing Kate and Matt for their impending doom, saying that Jack doesn't flush the toilet to illustrate her point. Jack is clearly pissed off and confirms her making fun of him is too much. A few comments that were made that I just find to be very negative. Too much? Too much? Yep. Oh, too much. Okay. Kate is starting to like Matt after finding out he has provided foster care to 27 kids. Yeah, that's so nice. That is nice. Especially like... Yeah, thanks. They would appreciate it so much. Carolina yeah. is hung up on Dion's height, saying her teenage son is taller than him. My son is taller than him. <laughs> Matt tells Kate his love language is physical affection and Kate says hers isn't. She tells him to stop touching her so much that they can work towards it instead. I mean, I won't lie, it takes me a while to feel comfortable about touching somebody. Yeah. Like, about, you know, I have to really be comfortable before I'm, like, 100% affectionate, yeah. And I get that. Yeah. I, I totally I get that. agree with Kate on this one. Carolina tells Dion about his teenage son and he was not prepared for the teenager bomb. Dion thinks about whether or not it is a deal breaker for him, but I really wasn't prepared for that at all. She tells her she should be proud of herself. He tells the cameras he still wants to give it a crack, but it's just something that I've got to come to grips with, I suppose. Thank you for being honest and telling me. No Dom complains about Jack again, this time about not making her coffee and live, boasts Jackson makes her coffee even though he doesn't drink it. So what's your excuse darling? Jack lets Dom know that the digs she keeps taking are making him feel like she's not proud of him. He's very mature, honest and calm about communicating this to her. It seems as if she's registering and feels bad until she tells him, you know what, Jack? It's been really hard. It's been really hard for me. Right? I don't know what's been hard for you. But also, there's got to be a moment where we're just like, we've got to just have a bit of compassion for each other. Dom has a revelation and says they need to be compassionate towards one another and that's what he's trying to ask of you. Uh, baby cakes. He tells her that talking to her is like talking to a brick wall. Now Jack tells the table that he doesn't feel like Dom is stoked to be with him. He wants to stay on his own tonight. The couple's roller coaster trips end here for this episode. It's rough to do that stuff. Like, I know it's basic and little. It's like, it's all you said. <laughs> Bet me all night.